uh, I'm back from yesterday. Uh, I'm Daniel Pierce, uh, developer at Indian University Libraries and the uh, Hyrax technical lead. And this talk is brought to you by the scruffiest Hyrax the internet has to offer. There's also a picture of Hyrax having a bad hair day right here. Uh, so reducing test flakes or flaky tests. Um, I imagine some of you might wonder what exactly a flaky test is. Well, it's a test that fails. Sometimes. This can happen for a few different reasons. Uh, one thing that can happen is from unpredictable code, which means that, well, one prime example is asynchronous JavaScript inside of feature tests where a like a headless browser is spun up and tries to run a script but there's a pop-up box that has generated by javascript and there's a callback and you have to wait for it to load and maybe the the code running the specs doesn't wait long enough or something of that, that nature uh another type is brought on by the side effects of other tests that have already been run or in other words, there's leftover data from those earlier tests. And that's the type I'm going to discuss today. Uh, so frequently when running tests on Hyrax, and I imagine also on your own code repositories, uh, you might see a result out of CircleCI or whichever service you like to use that looks like this. Uh, this is actually the PR that Tams and I were using, or I should say this is the branch that Tams and I were using to bring, uh, to test Ruby 3 code on Hyrax, or to test Hyrax on Ruby 3. Uh, this was actually the last rebase of this branch on main uh, as we successfully integrated more and more fixes. And you can see that the Ruby 2.7, uh, job is the one that failed here while all of the ruby 3 jobs down below are fine that seems a little suspect even the uh the valkyrie mode ruby 27 passed so this is a flaky test uh it, it doesn't happen all the time circle ci tries to identify these with this little flaky uh tag here Given our project's uh, complexity, sometimes this doesn't show up, especially if it's one that's not seen very often. Um, so what a lot of people do in this case, and what I've done frequently, is just hit this little uh, restart with an X symbol, which means just retry whatever job failed here. And that might work. I mean, they are flaky tests, so they fail sometimes. Uh, but it's a waste of resources. It's a waste of CI time, which, you know, if we're paying for CI time, that's also a waste of money. I don't know exactly what dollar amount every uh, run of these tests would cost in the IRX case, but they add up. Uh, it's also a waste of developer time. We have to go in here, say, oh, why did my PR fail? Oh, it's a flaky test. Let me, let me click the button and wait another 10 minutes or 20 minutes or however long it takes. So how do we fix this flaky test? Well, first we have to identify what, what is failing and why it's failing. Um, so here's the output from that uh, failed test. You can see that is this uh, collection member service. <clears throat> oh, actually, let me go back for a second. You can see that the name of this was the Hyrex Collections collection member service add member. Uh, method when single membership collection error raises an error. Something went wrong with that. Uh, so here's what this looks like in CircleCI, looking at the failed RSpec. In the actual output of RSpec, there's two different uh, views that you can actually see in CircleCI. There's one where it kind of summarizes all of the failed specs and gives you the output from them. But sometimes you need a little more context about what's actually going on. In that case, you have to go in and look at the actual RSpec output. Uh, and there's a couple of reasons for that, for our purposes here. One is it tells you what the randomized seed is. And that's important for later. 
in this case, 15209. Uh, the reason that's important is because our spec by default runs the list of specs you give it, whether or not that's a specific list or just all of your specs, uh, in a random order. And the purpose of that is to catch flaky tests like this, where the, the data could change from one uh, test to another. So to identify the the culprit here, like what is causing this collection member service spec to fail? It, it itself isn't broken. Something else has has broken it, and maybe the fix lies within uh, the collection member service spec, or maybe it lies within whatever other spec we we figure out is uh, causing problems. So what we need to do is make use of a feature that our spec has called bisect, and that is a tool that takes a list of the specs and runs them to find the failure and then successively removes more and more of the specs to figure out exactly which two, hopefully with only two, uh, cause the problem. So to do that, we need to get the list of specs that was actually run in this circle CI uh, run. This is complicated a little bit because for Hyrax, we actually split all the specs over 10 different runners. And so any given R spec run is only actually running one about one tenth of the tests. And that is affected by this random seed. If you apply the random seed to just a different list of specs, you're going to get uh, bad results or unusable results. So here's where we can find out what exactly was run. Now, this wasn't actually available until in Hyrax's CircleCI output until just recently because uh, I switched um, the CircleCI orb. Our orb is like a collection of helper methods. Uh, I switched from something that had been, we created ourselves that lived in the Samvera CircleCI orb uh, that its purpose was to run our spec. But I switched to kind of the upstream one that CircleCI itself makes. And part of that is they enable uh, in the shell. So this, this output up here, this is a screenshot, so I can't scroll up. But right before they run our spec, they enable the, the X option. I forget what word that stands for. Explain, maybe? Uh, but the, the, the result of that is uh, the command that's being run is output in, in the output. So we can see right here, it has this plus in front of it. This highlighted line is the actual command that's being run. So a bundle exec R spec, and then a list of all the spec files in this one tenth slice of all the specs. Now you might notice that this goes off the right side of the screen. This is a very long list. In fact, if we copy that whole line into a text editor, it is this large. You can see that it includes the uh, the seed here. Uh, so this is all the specs that are run in that one instance that uh, things failed. Now, the reason there's another reason to copy this into a text editor, and that is it turns out on many systems there's actually a limit of 4,095 characters to go into uh, a terminal command. And it turns out that this length currently is just a little bit longer than 4,000. So what would happen is you try and copy this whole big line and uh, someone would get cut off. So you might not end up with all the specs here. You'd probably end up with a bad path. So we take all this output, put it into a script file that we can run. Uh, I would just put it in the, the Hyrax uh, root directory, so root of the, the Git repo. Um, copy all that in there. Go start up your DASI compose, uh, your Docker container. Uh, get into it by using the exec command to get into a shell change to the Hyrex engine directory, uh, potentially run bundle install because sometimes there's a little mismatch of gems depending on what you've been doing. And then I don't have it displayed here, but run 
the the shell script you have. And what that does is it starts doing this bisect option, and it actually won't output anything for a while here. You can see at the bottom it says running suite to find failures, and that's going to take several minutes at least uh, while it does its work. Uh, but eventually, it should output something that looks like this, uh, where it has removed examples that didn't cause failures until after several minutes, it'll give you a minimal rig reduction command. In this case, our spec run. In this case, there's only one spec in this particular file, but the delete resource uh, feature spec, run that first, and then run the, this collection member service spec, which is the one we noticed that was failing. So those two run just by themselves, and we have the seed included here, but almost for sure this is going to be the first one that gets to run the, the delete resource spec in this case. Uh, so you take that command, you can run it directly in the shell you're already in. I like to add in this format documentation option just so it lists uh, the names of the specs that it's running. And it should give you that same failure. So that's the easy part of all this to fix a flaky spec. Now we'd have to go look into the code and see what conflict there is here. Uh, I haven't done that yet. I've just made sure that I know which specs are having problems. So that was the easy part. The hard part is actually fixing it. Uh, but I hope you learned a little something from this. And there's many flaky specs we've had in Hyrax that come up all the time. So it's a, it's a good thing that you can do when you have kind of a little break. Uh, with nothing else to to really focus on, you just need to improve something. So thank you, uh, and thank you all for coming to this virtual connect. It's been great talks. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you so much, Daniel. Any questions? Daniel, there was one question in the chat that was asked more generally, but maybe you have experienced this of examples of a time that fixing a flaky test involved code changes as opposed to um, changing the test to the test setup. Do you have any, any experience of that? Uh, nothing comes to mind off the top of my head. Um, I suppose it's possible, although that probably points to some sort of code smells. Uh, usually, in my experience, it ends up being something like a factor is used to create an object, maybe with a title or an ID, especially if you're using like a, a literal ID, like, no, oh, this is test, the test object. And then something else wants to load up all of those kinds of objects, and somehow that object didn't get cleared out or something along those lines. <laughs> 